Coog's house. The Houston Cougars are building a new football culture, but they're losing part of their identity along the way. You are Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Cougs, the daily podcast about your Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach, Parker Ainsworth. And whether you're a Houston fan or just a hater who came to stop by, thank you for making Locked On Cougs your first listen of the day. If you want to join the conversation but don't know what to say, Tell us in the comment section down below, wherever you found this, what your favorite condiment is. Today's show is brought to you by Monopoly Go. More on that in a minute, but it is fun and addicting for the competitive folks out there like myself. Trust me on that. We've got a number of things to talk about today. One, we are going to talk some about the latest loss to the transfer portal for the Houston Cougars in the defensive backfield. Uh, a fairly sizable loss from a fairly small player. That's probably not right to say. Anyway. I think we're going to miss him. We'll talk about that in the last segment. I want to talk some about some spitballing ideas I have in the second segment. Because in the first segment, we're going to talk about how a key part of what Houston has built as their football culture, one of the few successful parts, you could say, of the last regime that could have been a lasting part for sure, may be officially gone. Sack Avenue, as you can see if you're on the YouTube audience, in the spray-painted over sign to my... Uh, my left, you're right. Uh, Sack Avenue is gone. Uh, now, Sack Avenue was a, a, a an identity and a mindset and a culture brought on by the defensive line under Coach Brian Early. Uh, it actually sounds like there's also some ties to the Anthony Jones bringing it in as well. Uh, but it all went away, I guess, to the public. Uh, as with as simple as a single tweet on Tuesday from one Coach Brian Early at Missouri. Yep, if you're on the YouTube audience, you can see it. But he just did hashtag Miz, M-I-Z, and then a big yellow and black sack av sign. Now, I would point out a couple things. One, uh, Brian Early was a, an assistant coach that had such an impact on the Houston Cougar football culture that fans were clamoring for him to stay even amongst the uh, regime, amid the regime change from one head coach to the next last winter, um, people love Brian Early and having Brian Early on staff, and he's going to do a great job at Missouri. Ultimately, he was initially not hired, but then was kind of hired after a second thought from the current staff, and then ultimately decided to leave and head to Missouri, bringing in Oscar Giles. Now, I, I really like Oscar and what they're doing there with the defensive front. And we'll talk some about that in the second segment as well. Um, but I think it's safe to say that assistant coach Brian Early had a big part in building the Houston Cougar football culture around a tough, gnarly, competitive defensive line, right? Um, it's reason it's one of the best parts of the defense. Even in a year like last year, they gave up a lot of rushing yards when you start looking at like analytical data that tracks the motion of players and who's in what gaps and who's doing their responsibilities, the defensive line continue to play at a very high level in the most porous of games, right? Um, now, obviously, like they get 77 to SMU a couple years ago, and you're thinking, like, what was the defense in that game? And truthfully, even in that game, the defensive line got decent pass rush pressure. The ball was just coming out of their hand of the SMU quarterback hands in like under two and a half seconds and there's no time to get there, right? Like that's the kind of um, way they impact the game in that one since Houston just couldn't make the tackles in the back half. Um, now, the way this tweet storm went out was actually kind of controversial because Brian Early tweeted out hashtag Ms. Sackav. The official Missouri football accounts tweeted out the location pin with Sack Ave and hashtag and Tiger Face and da da da, right? And then people got upset. Like a number of different, very Twitter strong fans got upset. And I don't mean to uh, go over this too much in depth for people that lived it, because I know some folks that are active on social media are actively watching the show as well. But for the folks that maybe were off Twitter for the day, A, good for you, but B, you missed out on watching some people fight about it. 
Um, and D'Anthony Jones came in and tried to squash things. Now, I thought what was more interesting before we get into D'Anthony Jones, actually, what Nancy Early, uh, wife of Ryan Early, came in to say, because she's obviously been fairly influential in this. We remember her with her tweeted takes throughout the uh, Houston Cougar version of Sac Avenue. But she tweeted at Derek Parrish and at D'Anthony Jones, are y'all upset over this? I'm pretty sure D'Anthony Jones said, you better take that with you, coach. So unless they have a problem with it, it remains, meaning it remains with coach Brian Early. Uh, Derek Parrish uh, replied directly to Nancy, saying that Sack Ave rides with whoever reps the brand and standard right, but it's if you know, you know. And if you aren't part of it, at least you get to witness. I'm all for it, Coach Early, because it's coming up north with me, too. Uh, notably just signed with the Toronto Argonauts, I believe. So that's what he's hinting at there. Nancy Early replied to him a little bit later, saying, take it with you, man. Heart emoji, Sack Av belongs to whoever was a part of it. If the players at Houston still believe in it, they are free to use it as well. But don't tag my husband, call him a clown, and not expect to get called out. Now, in a similar vein, um, DeAnthony Jones actually tweeted out as well, respectfully speaking as the actual CEO of hashtag Zach Av, for the people who actually repped it, they can take it wherever they please. It's not a one-person thing. It's a brand that can be represented by me and my teammates and my coach at Brian Early. He can rep Zach Av at Mizzou. He followed up with clarification. I brought Zach Av with me from Long Beach City College. Ask Coach B. Patty, for those who are confused, on the history of Zach Av. Now, a bunch of Twitter accounts without names and faces also got in the mix here. Um, but I think it's interesting what the players had to say along the way here. Sack Avenue has had a series of the best players that come through Houston. Peyton Turner, Logan Hall, Nick Thurman. Uh, we just saw David, uh, Derek Parrish and D'Anthony Jones, uh, David Anini. And frankly, I know he wasn't technically in the club here, but like Ed Oliver fits the bill in a lot of ways. We think of defensive linemen, I think of Houston defensive players. He was just before it. Um, and now Nelson Caesar and David Gwegbu are going to, uh, you know, try and make 53 man rosters uh, in Seattle and Buffalo respectively. And they're carrying the legacy with them. I think they've both got pretty good shots. We'll talk about that as we get closer to the season next fall, but, a lot of these guys are feeling like this was a mentality and a culture of people. And so the idea that a place gets to hold on to it doesn't sit right with them. I think it's also interesting to say that they all say Houston can use this if they want to, as long as they continue to live up to it. Now it's just, it's, a, it's interesting on a bunch of different fronts to watch people interact like this because Sac Avenue really did feel like it had a bigger part of the culture of Houston Cougar football than just some t-shirts and NIL deals or whatever, right? Um, as was pointed out by several people on Twitter, you cannot trademark something as simple as SAC Ave, right? Um, and, and so it's not like it's going to go to court or anything like that. But it did feel like a lot of Houston Cougar fans were hurt over this. And I'm here to say, I think we got bigger fish to fry here, folks. Um, I understand that it was an enjoyable part of the football program for several years now. It really was, and as a lineman guy, as a guy that likes watching line play in football games, um, I have to say that like Houston was really good on the defensive trenches, and being able to cite Sac Av as like a culture of winning almost felt like a miniature version of what we talk about with the Houston men's basketball culture, right? Like excellence being the key factor, competing being a key factor, um, but ultimately. Things change. About the only thing that is consistent on this earth is that things will change, right? And the coaching staff is changing. The football culture is changing. Things are shifting. There is not a necessity for Sac Ave at the University of Houston. I think there's an opportunity for something completely new and different. And I'd love to like to talk about that new and that different in a moment. But first, I gotta be honest, all this action makes me want to get in on the action. And there's no better place to do that than at 
FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, is at the winner take all time the NBA and NHL. And FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right. I said in the second segment, I talk about ways they could go about this, but I think the interesting thing here is that part of what was so great about Sack Ave was it was a catchy, catchy name, right? There goes Sack Ave. There goes Sack Ave. There goes all Sack Ave going off today. All those kinds of things were catchy and simple and easy. And whatever the defensive line's next slogan, mantra, trope, catchphrase is, I think it also needs to be something fun and easy to say. Like if you're going to stick with the idea of sacks, I mean, you could do sack city, sack Boulevard, sack circle. The idea of running the hoop is a big common thing for defensive linemen. So sack circle may have something to do with whatever comes next. Uh, Honestly, Houston's going to looking to run a three, four defense. And that opens up a number of different conceptual ideas too. My favorite, which is the three, four mafia, uh, you know, Academy award winners. If you're you know, shout out to three, six mafia, I, I think there's fun ways to play on that. The odd front ogres, uh, one way to get after it in the trenches as well. Uh, the three down linemen, I was a, a three down frown or three down, make you frown or something along those lines all play off of this idea of the future of this defense being these three big bullies in the middle. Um, and then uh, I think, hmm, I'm trying how to politely say this, I think it also sets an aspirational goal, right? Uh, three, four mafia, for instance, is like, oh, we're coming for throats, <laughs> right? Like we're we're coming to get you. Um, the odd front ogres implies a, an ugly style of play, right? This idea like we're just getting after the three down frown implies making plays that are detrimental to the opponent in a way that I think is, uh, you know, a fun way to go about this. Uh, on the whole, though, I, I do think that some sort of play – on words here can get fun and be a way to continue to market the strength of what's been at Houston. That is the defensive line. Um, and to kind of continue that. And one reason I think that will continue whatever we call it or rename it is Oscar Giles. The head is the defensive line coach. Uh, Giles comes in and, um, honestly, uh, after his previous stints here, I think his most recent one was in the Tom Herman staff in the 2015-16 seasons. Um, they were pretty darn good up front, right? Talk about that, you know, I think I think them being good at that point in time, you know, you could look back and think about um, ways you could bring back the mm, – the bullies that were up front in, the, in that, that that same kind of mentality and culture to this team as you you know navigate year two in the Big Twelve with a fairly depleted roster at this point, um, we'll we'll see who they end up having out there with the starting the starting three. I would say the starting four, the starting three when the season comes around. I think playing off of Giles is is a clever move here as well. Uh, you have just like Giles guys or Giles goons. Um, they play with Guile style, uh, Oscar's odd front, something to get along the way here that you're looking at different ways to play off of his mentality. Because what coach bring, what new coach, Coach Giles brings to the program here is a different kind of swagger than Brian Early had. It's not better, it's not worse. I don't mean to say that either one of them are better or worse, but it's definitely different. Now, um, where early was loud and boisterous and like he wanted play players to mimic his energy because that's the kind of mentality energy you needed to win. And it was all competitive, competitive, competitive. There's a toughness and a discipline to what Giles seems to be bringing when you hear him speak. Right. And I don't mean to say that those are two antithetical things either. The toughness and discipline of Giles are the 
competitive nature and uh, chaotic energy around uh, Brian Early, they don't have to be antithetical. They're frankly two different ways to skin the same cat. But I do think that as you're shifting gears here, it's okay that there's a reset. I mean, while they ran some 3-4 last year because Belk was kind of drawing at straws to figure out some way to get Nelson Caesar one-on-one in different spots to pass rush, and then Nelson Caesar got hurt, kind of hurt that whole thing. Um, I do think that the the mentality of the defensive line has to change and you go from the old defense, a more traditional 4-2-5, uh, to this 3-4, constantly rotating, constantly bumping, constantly eating up gaps kind of defensive line. The way they're going to have to play is different. So the mentality and the marketing and branding has to be different. And this is a long way. I've spent a long time getting to this. Um, I bet that the large majority of the sacks come from linebackers this year. Can I put a future on that? Talk to FanDuel. Can I get a future on that? Yeah. We'll see. I think that the majority of the sacks and pressure are going to come from linebackers because after watching the spring football game, it feels like the defensive linemen are going to be way more active in the run. For instance... Uh, Keith Cooper or an AJ Holmes, uh, Brandon Mack to some degree. Um, I don't know, as I look up and down this, uh, Tomathan Good, uh, Zyka Strong, uh, a bunch of these guys are the types of body types. They're going to eat up B gaps, eat up tackles, destroy down blocks. <sighs> They're not necessarily the explosive speed that the Nelson sees the world played with in that first 10 yard burst, right? Uh, they're not necessarily getting after the quarterback in the same way that Logan Hall did, right? But they are still going to be an impactful unit. And that's why I don't think this is a totally lost cause either. Um, I, I, I just, I think that it needs the appropriate branding carrying over sack Ave with focus on different things, with new coaching staffs and whatever, probably was not the right move. Um, now, if you were going to keep the same, uh, I don't know, the same core values, this, emphasize the same kind of defense that, that relied on the same kinds of things and just really just continue to flush that out, maybe. But there were very intentional things shifted here. And so I don't know that it's what I would go with. Um one thing that I also wouldn't go with would be losing corners to the transfer portal. We lost a, a big one on Tuesday. I want to talk about losing Isaiah Hamilton in a second and what that can mean for the program. But first, I want to talk about something I'm never losing, and that is Monopoly Go, our newest buddies over there, because you've heard me talk about this a whole lot, actually, so I probably shouldn't go too far in depth. But there's just so much to talk about in the game that I feel like I kind of have to talk about every week and almost every day at this point. And Monopoly Go, you get to team up with your friends for time tournaments where you get to actually work together and build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so much to get. You can get unique stickers and trade with friends, cool new playing uh, pieces to travel the boards with, hilarious emojis for when you trash talk one another because we know all successful games have some level of trash talk. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasure, Robot Pachinko, or other things like that. And there's always new timed events that help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent freezes, etc. There's Always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench and go download it now, free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. All right, so the news was official on Tuesday afternoon that Isaiah Hamilton is entering the transfer portal. Uh, we are at this point, as you're listening to this, past the 
official deadline to submit that paperwork. Um, but that's just the deadline was, I guess, Tuesday afternoon, uh, which is why I think Isaiah Hamilton got his name in there when he did. I would point out, though, that you'll probably see a lot of players listed from Houston or otherwise. I hope at this point it's just mostly the otherwise um, as having entered the transfer portal in the next couple of days um, because of the processing time. For whatever reason, it takes a long time to process the transfer portal requests uh, you're looking at 48 hours for some guys um if not just over that right so you might see guys as late as thursday early friday morning officially be in the transfer portal when the truth is is that just means they filed it like right before the deadline right um suffice to say that i didn't really want to lose as a hamilton i'm a little upset about the train and i understand that you know I'm not upset with him. I'm not going to root poorly against him. I'm not that guy. And I kind of refuse to be that guy at this point. I I do think, though, this one hurts. Isaiah Hamilton was arguably the best corner on the field last year. Uh, Houston looked like they're going to be having an improved defensive year in the back half next year with some returners like Halsey and Hamilton and then uh, some different scheme focuses and things like that. Hamilton had four picks. Hamilton, more importantly to the program, from Channel View High School, went to Texas Southern, now the University of Houston, and felt like a Houstonian through and through. So we'll see where he ends up. Um, and I guess technically, while well, he's entered the transfer portal on the last day, he could always still can come back and withdraw his name. You know, withdraw from the transfer portal for a lot longer window. Um, and so, you know, I guess technically it doesn't have to be Sayonara. I do think it's interesting, though, and the reason that it might be Sayonara or See You Later or whatever to Isaiah um, is, unfortunately, this is the second time in five months he's put his name in. He put his name initially in the transfer portal back in December and was talked out of it, pulled his name out and returned to Houston for the spring. And it's now putting his name back in. Um now, some people would say, like, well, Parker, he's just going to keep putting his name in to test the waters to see what kind of money's out there. I guess that's fair. But I think in the logistical the logistical mind of a college kid, which seems like an oxymoron, um, but thinking about this logically, right, um, it sounds like getting talked into staying in December was really more about, like, give it a chance. And then spring happened. He gave it a chance, and it sounds like he may be on the road. And again, I, I wish him the best. I wish the Houston Cougar program the best. They can, I mean, as long as they don't cross paths, they can both go on, he and the Houston Cougars, to have very successful football futures. I just worry um, about where the ceiling of the program goes without him. Because right now, okay, this is how I, I see defensive backfield. Two corners, Jalen Emery, Latrell McCutcheon. McCutcheon impressed in the spring game. McCutcheon started at USC, started played a lot of reps as a freshman at Oklahoma. Um, could see him getting a lot of play at one of the corner spots. Emery withdrawing his name from the transfer portal, I think means he's got some sort of an idea he's going to play a lot here. Right Now, there's not a whole lot of nickel and dime packages in uh, the Shieldwood, uh, in, in the Shieldwood defense. Um, but I do think that you'll see Jawan Gaston some there. Jawan Gaston's natural speed and ball skills. It feels like to this point in his career, it's been getting him in the right place at the right time. And so I think that nickel corner spot's easier working a much while the receiver has a two way go because you're not on the sideline. It is typically more condensed space. I think he'll do well up there if he is called upon it or if they need it. AJ Halsey's got to be one of the two safeties. Bluntly, A.J. Halsey probably had the best defensive day at the spring game. Um, he might have had the best day, period, at the spring game. He's a, he's a ball player. He is really good. And at breakouts, I mean, he had good series and, and good games last year. But a breakout season this year could set this guy up for the senior year that you perform well and go pro. Kind of, He could be stair-stepping for him like that if his junior season, this upcoming season, is as good as that spring game tape, honestly. The other safety is interesting. Uh, you'll hear some people asking for a, a Mo Williams, some people asking for like a Noah Guzman. I, 
okay, this is my coaching philosophy coming through. And so I should probably be upfront about that. Um, if I am coaching and I have two players of equal talent and one is younger, I think a lot of people in an old school mentality think, well, I've got to play the veteran. They've got more experience. And I, especially the couple times I've been involved in rebuilding a program, which it looks like Houston's doing, I actually kind of go the opposite route. If I have two players of equal talent, unless the experience is like dramatically crazy different, I actually go with the younger player. Um, and my thought is they'll improve or have you know more room for improvement. They have you know this first couple of steps towards getting better will be bigger steps. Um, and so I actually could see long way to say. Maurice Williams, if it were up to me, getting the, a lot of reps here at that other safety spot, rel starting relatively early. Houston is rebuilding as a football program. Houston's trying to get guys to the right culture. Everything he's done to date is implied that Mo Williams can be that culture piece. He wants to be an ambassador for the program around the city of Houston. He talks about the city since his commitment. It's been a big part of it for him. Um, I don't think you have to like, like – been over backwards to get him to stay or anything like that. But I do think letting that guy grow into the best version of himself as fast as possible is important. Now, that's my quick look at the back half of the defense. You'll notice I didn't get very deep in the depth chart. And that's kind of, I think, where losing Isaiah Hamilton hurts the most, actually, is that it been like having... He and McCutcheon start, and Amory coming in as the third corner. Just the depth of rotation there with solid guys would have been a lot nicer. And again, best of luck to Isaiah, whatever your next endeavors are. However, Houston's got another position. They, they need to go find a rotational piece at corner in the transfer portal, and it continues to add up. As the Houston Cougars look to add through that, we're breaking it down each and every day here at Locked On Cougs. Locked On Cougs is a proud member of the Locked On Podcast. And when there's your team, our Houston Cougars, each and every day, go Cougs.